Hi, Douglas here. In this video, I want to bring your attention to the pelvis and hips. And these usually get spoken of together when runners are talking about that part of the body, and they're usually referred to as the hips, so um, I might use them interchanged here. The hips are the powerhouse in running, and it's crucial that they be used effectively for both performance and if you want to remain injury resistant which I think we all do. To be the source of the power, they must be mobile within a proper range and stable so as not to lose efficiency. Uh, their mobility of the hips depends a lot on the mobility of the upper part of the body as well. So when you watch these runners that are running here, I want you to observe the upper part, the, upper, the whole body, the hips, the upper body, and the stride. Both the mobility and the stability depends on the balance of strength, tension, and tone in the muscles that are both intrinsic to the pelvis, such as the glutes and rotators, and muscles that extend to the hip from the torso, such as the lats, abs, and hip flexors. So the mobility and the functionality of the hips depend on what's going on up and down the body. Now I'm just going to throw a little bit of science at you here and to get to study how the hips actually work. In running, the pelvis blends the motion of the three cardinal planes of motion that, we're, that are available to us. That is the frontal plane that cuts us in half front to back, the sagittal plane that cuts us in half side to side, and the transverse plane that cuts us in half top to bottom. When you look at the sagittal plane, Motion is forward and backward out of the body moving in this plane. And what the pelvis is doing is moving in a powerful circular motion, kind of like a like locomotive wheel. And that pelvis is going forward and back, forward and back. In the transverse plane, the pelvis twists and untwists in relationship to the shoulders. Something like a DNA molecule Here's an example of the pelvis moving in that plane of motion. You can see the twisting and untwisting of this runner's body as she's moving down the road. In the frontal plane, movement is up and down, such as uh, seen in jumping jacks. Here, the hips are moving up in the uh, swing phase and down in the uh, ground contact point. So now I want to sum up the actual role and relationship of the hips to the legs. The hips precede the leg in phase, so to speak, which is along for the ride, not passively, but as helpers, adding their own speed and pop to the hip power. It works like this. As the leg sweeps backward, the foot on the ground, the hip begins to move upward. This causes the leg to come into a high recovery position with no muscular effort in the leg itself. It's all reflex, swing, and momentum. As the leg is rising, the hip has already begun to move forward. The thigh follows, is reflexively drawn forward, and then floats into the drive position. As the thigh begins to float, the hip is already moving downward. This helps to decelerate the lower leg and bring the foot to an underbody ground contact point. By the time the foot contacts the ground, the hip's already moving rearward, and the process is being recycled. Here are a few um, short videos that show some before and after, before is on the left, after on the right, of runners who I've worked with to get the hips mobilized and engaged. As you watch these, also observe the upper body, the alignment of upper body to the pelvis, and the stride changes that have gone on in these runners. Thanks for watching this video and for more information visit my website www.radiantrunning.com